On August 17, 1975, NASCAR hosted the Talladega 500. The race had been delayed an entire week due to heavy rainstorms, and NASCAR's hand was forced to wait it out. 60,000 fans packed Talladega Super Speedway to watch 50 cars race 188 laps on the fastest track in the U.S. Unfortunately, just seven laps into the race, 45-year-old Tiny Lund was killed in a horrifying wreck that could have been even worse if a couple things went differently. Dwayne Lewis Lund was born on November 14, 1929, in Iowa. At a young age, Dwayne began racing motorcycles and eventually moved up to midget cars and sprint cars. At 21, Lund served in the Korean War for the Air Force. After returning home and racing on dirt for a couple more years, he decided to take his racing efforts to NASCAR. Through his early years, Lund was a big guy. He amassed a 6 foot 5 and 270 pounds in adulthood, which fittingly earned him the name Tiny. Tiny got his first chance to race in NASCAR in 1955 for Carl Rupert. Carl stuck his safety belt company's logo on the car, and the pair entered the October race at Memphis, Arkansas Speedway. Lund started 23rd, but on lap 65, he was in a pretty bad accident. In an ironic twist, Lund's safety belt failed after his car flipped. Luckily, he only sustained a couple bruises and a broken arm. So Lund's introduction to the Grand National Series wasn't great. Remember, that was just his first start, but he was determined to succeed. He borrowed some money and built a brand new Pontiac with the help of Robert McKee. Tiny, his wife, and McKee moved to South Carolina to pursue this dream together. Unfortunately, the dream team would not last long. After racing in 9 of the first 18 races of the season, Tiny's car was repossessed because he couldn't afford to make his payments, and he couldn't afford to pay McKee. Tiny and McKee had to part ways, and McKee would actually go on to become a pretty successful engineer and designer in the sport. But for Tiny, he was back to square one again. However, the determined racer was able to pair up with Gus Holtzmuller and race the final 13 races of the season. In his rookie season, Lund scored 8 top 10s. The next year, Tiny jumped around from car to car, racing some for Gus, some for Petty Enterprises, and several others. Despite the journeyman season, he scored 6 top 5s and 15 top 10s in 32 races. Over the next 5 years, Tiny ran and won in lower racing series, but as far as the Grand National Series went, he had relatively little success. But all of this changed at the start of 1963. In February 1963, he went to Daytona Beach seeking a ride for the Daytona 500. Virtually penniless, he was counting on the kindness of friends for help. Just days before the Daytona 500, Marvin Panch, who was driving in the 500 for the Wood Brothers, was involved in a sports car crash testing at Daytona. His car flipped over and caught fire. Many spectators ran to assist Panch, including Tiny Lund, who was one of the men who pulled Panch out of his car, saving his life. Panch was injured due to burns sustained in the crash and had to miss the big race. The Wood Brothers decided to put Tiny in the car in his place. He started second and finished sixth in his Daytona qualifier race in the iconic number 21 car, and he was clearly fast. His speed was shown the next weekend whenever Tiny fought with Fred Lorenzen and Ned Jarrett in the final laps of their race. He had saved fuel all race long, drafting from start to finish, and made one fewer pit stop. After Lorenzen and Jared had to pit, Tiny Lund prevailed and won the biggest race in the sport. But after this, his career didn't take off like many thought it would. Two races after the Daytona 500, still racing for the Wood Brothers, his engine blew while leading at Bristol. He got some more chances to drive for the Wood Brothers, but nothing long term once Marvin Panch returned. Despite winning the Daytona 500, he still couldn't find a key partnership to get him a full-time ride. He raced in less than half of the 1963 season, the same season he won the Daytona 500. He would race for between three to four more owners a season just trying to stay in the sport. After a winless 1964, Tiny won a race in back-to-back -back years, but then had a winless drought of nearly five years, although during this time he made less than 50 starts. Tiny's most successful season came in 1971, where he scored two wins, six top fives, and nine top tens in only 15 races. 
Clearly, he had speed, but still could not get into a full-time ride. During this time, it's worth mentioning Tiny competed at the NASCAR Grand American Series, where he won 41 out of 109 races between 1968 and 1971. His two wins in the 1971 National Series were one in his Grand American Pony Car. A Pony Car was a car that entered the Grand National Series to fill up empty entry spots in the field. In 1972, NASCAR created a Grand National E-Series to make up for racetracks who had lost their race dates due to changes made by the incoming National Series sponsor Winston. Tiny fielded a car in the series, with little success in the first year. But the next year in 1973, Tiny became a NASCAR champion, winning the E-Series with five wins. Unfortunately, the next year the series dissolved. After this high point of Tiny's career, he wasn't very active in the new Winston Cup series, probably due to increased costs and competitiveness. With now only about 30 races on the schedule, Guys like him couldn't just show up to short tracks on weekends, where only 25 to 30 cars would show up and everyone would make the field. Between 1972 and 1973, Tiny ran 9 races, but retired in 8 due to mechanical failures. He did not even attempt a race in 1974. In 1975, after not qualifying for the Daytona 500, Tiny showed up at Talladega. There were 50 entries at Talladega, and Tiny once again failed to qualify. However, the race was delayed for a week due to heavy rain. During this week, Grant Adcox's crew chief died of a heart attack, so Grant appropriately withdrew from the race. Tiny was the next fastest car in qualifying, so he was pushed into the starting field. Although it was for very unfortunate circumstances, Tiny finally had a stroke of luck. But soon after the start of the race, Tiny's luck shifted in the complete opposite direction. On lap 7, J.D. McDuffie and Tiny Lund made contact on the backstretch. Both cars spun down the track as the field behind them started crashing as well. Rookie Terry Link slammed into the driver's side door of Lund. Terry Link's car burst into flames and was knocked unconscious. Two spectators from the infield ran to assist Link, and they got to his window net and started to cut his safety belt off. A security guard ran to them and said, get out of here, we have people to take care of him, they'll be here in a minute. After the spectators refused, the guard started beating on them, trying to get them away from the car. At this time, driver Walter Ballard pushed the guard out of the way and said, I don't care if I had a broken back, if my car was on fire, I'd want someone to pull me out. So the trio of Walter and the two spectators pulled Terry out of the car. Once they pulled him out, they noticed he was unconscious and barely breathing, but they were successfully able to revive him and keep him in stable condition. Terry Link's life was saved. But on the other side of the spectrum, at the same time track rescue teams were feverishly working on extracting Tiny from his car. Once he was extracted and reached the infield care center, doctors said he was beyond hope. Due to chest and other internal injuries, 10 minutes after the wreck, Tiny Lund was pronounced dead. The drivers didn't learn of Tiny's passing until after the race. In what should have been time to celebrate, Buddy Baker's cheers turned to tears upon learning the fate of his competitor. Once he heard, Baker stepped away for a few minutes to be by himself. Once he was interviewed, Buddy said, Tiny used to drive for my dad. I used to go to Tiny's place to fish. He was one of the great people in racing. Tiny isn't the most remembered name in NASCAR, but his story deserves to live on forever. He was an outstanding man and father who was able to live his dream racing for a living and take care of his family. In his professional racing career, he won races in several NASCAR touring divisions, USCA, ARCA, and more. He is estimated to have about 500 race wins in professional motorsports. For his achievements, he was inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame and the Iowa Motorsports Hall of Fame in 1994 and the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America in 2020. He was recently recognized for being part of NASCAR's Greatest 75 Drivers, as he was on the original 50 Greatest Drivers list. Anyways guys, that about does it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you are new and so you never miss a video. Anyways guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.